Well, good morning and welcome to Moore's Chapel. We are so excited that each and every one of you chose to join us this morning for worship. Our mission here at Moore's Chapel is to reach the surrounding communities, Cecil County and beyond for Jesus Christ. And our vision is witnessing thousands saved, healed, delivered, and set free to be the people that God is creating you and me to be. I also want to share one of our core values. We're going to share a different core value every single week. So the first one I'm going to share with us today is we welcome, this is one of our core values, we welcome all people from all ages, nations, races, and walks of life. We love, honor, and respect all. That is one of our core values here at Morris Chapel. So again, we're just welcome to you. We are so glad you are joining us today. The Really, the big announcement this week is our Christmas Eve services. We're going to have online services uh, starting at 7 p.m. online. We're also going to have live service in our fellowship hall at 9 p.m. in person. And don't forget to wear a mask. And we're also going to have candlelight a candle lighting uh, service as part of that. So we hope that you'll join us. And this is a great time to invite, invite, invite. People are so open to an invitation um, to come to church, especially during this time and season. So don't forget to invite your friends, families, uh, relatives, and your, your entire network, your coworkers, everyone. Invite, invite, invite. Amen. So Peter's going to come up with an announcement with the youth. Here we go. All right. What's up, Moore's Chapel youth and parents of youth? I hope you guys are having a phenomenal Sunday morning wherever you guys are. Um, I just wanted to let you guys know about some things that are happening at Moore's Chapel youth this Christmas season. So last week, or last Wednesday, we were supposed to have a youth movie night. We were going to watch The Grinch, but unfortunately that got canceled due to the impending snowstorm. I don't know about you, but snow came a little bit too early for me this year, but <laughs> it was a lot of, um, it was cool to have a day off. But anyway, we are rescheduling that for December 30th. Um, we'd love for you, your youth students to come out on December 30th and watch a movie with us, invite friends, and it's going to be a blast. We are also this coming Wednesday on December 23rd, starting at 6.30, we are doing what we're calling carol calls. Now, we've been talking about this for a couple weeks, but what carol calls are is essentially we're going to be doing Christmas carols over the phone. And so we're going to be calling anybody who wants a carol call, and we're going to be singing Christmas carols and spreading the joy of Christmas. I don't know about you, but I love Christmas music. It's just so joyful and exciting. And we, we want to spread some of that joy this Christmas season. So if you want to come out on, on December 23rd, please come out at 630 and sing carols with us. And if you know anybody that wants a carol call, please let us know. And we'd love to give that to them. Hope you guys have a great day. Thank you. All right, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Holy God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we thank you for your presence with us right now. We pray for more, Lord, more of you, more of your Holy Spirit, more of your love. Lord, we pray that you would open our ears and eyes today, our spiritual ears and eyes, so that we can hear the word that you have for us individually, so that we can see what you are up to in our lives, in our families, and neighborhoods, and world. Lord, we pray that you will change and transform us, that you would change and transform us by the power of your love. Let your love so permeate our hearts and our minds, our speech and our action, that there will be no mistake that we know you and that we love you. Lord, we thank you for what you're doing in and through our lives. 
here at the church, in, our, in the community, in our workplaces, and more. We thank you, Lord, for that. We know that each of us have different challenges and struggles, uh, including myself, and we pray for wisdom in those areas. We pray for your wisdom, your strength, your courage to walk unafraid, to walk in righteousness, to do what is pleasing to you, Lord. Lord, we pray for our community. We pray for a harvest of souls. We pray that in the coming months, we will begin to see people saved, healed, and delivered, and set free, Lord. We thank you that you go before us. We thank you that you are preparing the way. We thank you that you are even in this moment, you are softening hearts to receive the good news of Jesus Christ. Lord, we give you all the praise, honor, and glory for what you're doing, and we pray this in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen, amen. Let us now say the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray as we pray together our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This is such a blessed time of year, yet individually it's easy to lose track of what's important. So the song that God kept giving me today was, I need thee every hour. And we just need you, Lord, every hour. Long time ago in Bethlehem, so the Holy Bible said, Mary's boy child, Jesus Christ, was born on Star. And from these there came 
shepherd boy to the mighty king do you know what i know do you know what i know in your palace warm mighty king do you know what i know do you know what i know a child a child shivers in the cold Bring him silver and gold. Let us bring him silver and gold. Said the king to the people everywhere. Listen to what I say. Listen to what I say. Pray for peace, people everywhere. Listen to what I say. Listen to what I say. The child, the child, sleeping in the night, he will bring us goodness and light. He will bring us goodness and light. He will bring us sending your son Jesus we thank you for sending the prince of peace the mighty king Emmanuel we thank you for sending us an example of love 
We, sent, we thank you for sending us as an example of how to love others like you do. And in this time of joy and excitement, we just ask that you will continue to remind us that the peace that you bring is here for us. And all we have to do is accept it. And as you sent Jesus so small and humble, Lord, we just come to you humble and grateful that you gave us the gift of salvation and grace and acceptance. And as we prepare to hear the message that you have put together for us, Lord, we just ask that you will open our hearts and open our minds to accept all the things that you have for us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The fourth Sunday of Advent. We light the fourth candle as a symbol of Christ our love. Advent is a time when we watch and wait for Christ's coming. We anticipate rediscovering the promises of Christ's love this season. 
Hear these words from Psalm chapter 36. Your love, Lord, reaches to the heavens, your faithfulness to the skies. Your righteousness is like the highest mountain, your justice like the great deep. You, Lord, preserve both people and animals. How priceless is your unfailing love, O God. People take refuge in the shadow of your wings. They feast on the abundance of your house. You give them drink from the rivers of delight. For with you is the fountain of life, and your light we see light. We light this candle in love. Let us pray. Lord, help us as we watch and wait. We thank you for Christ's love. This is made available to us and all people. Fill us with your love. We pray that it will be evident in our heart, speech, and actions. Help us to experience and share your love with all we meet. Amen. All right, so today's scripture reading is from 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 through 16. It says, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. We know that we live in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and testify that the father has sent his son to be the savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the son of God, then God lives in him and he in God. And so we know and rely on the love of, that God has for us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for the blessing and the privilege that it is to have a connection with you. And God, I pray that that connection would be manifested in wherever anyone who's listening is right now, God, whether they are on their couch or in their car, God, I pray you would meet them with the love that you have for them. And out of the love that you have for us, God, I pray that you would, by your spirit, convict us to go out and love um, each other, God. Help us show us, God, how we can show that love to the other people around us this week. Pray this in your mighty name. Amen. As we've journeyed through Advent over these past three weeks, we've been looking through the lens and experience of different people in the Nativity story. Today, we're going to take a slightly different approach. We will look at and consider all the people found in the biblical account of Christ's birth as we seek to rediscover the attribute today of Christ's love. As we do this, we will come to realize that the birth of Christ brings together a wide variety of people across many divides and contrasts. The Christmas story through the lens of Christ's love is a powerful one. It is the beginning of a new spiritual future that has been made available to all people from all races, nations, ages, socioeconomic classes, political persuasions, religious affiliations, etc. 
Christ's love seeks to break down all the man-made barriers that seek to keep people separate and divided from each other and from God. As we walk through the story in order, uh, we'll start with Zechariah and Elizabeth, Mary and Joseph. They represent the old and the young. The prophetic words spoken in the past and the fulfillment of the covenant promises. They represent the separation and death of the past and the inclusion and new life that is now present and available to everyone who invites Christ to be their Lord and Savior. It is Jesus' birth, life, death, and resurrection that has torn the veil, separating people from direct access to God. Jesus opens the way for everyone, for everyone to enter into his love, for everyone to be changed and transformed, for everyone to have new life in Christ. So we next contrast this with the lowly shepherds and the angelic host of the angels. The beings of both earth, including human and animals, and of heaven. The physical and the spiritual. We meet the magi. Their story is found in Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. I encourage you to read that this week. The Magi, traditionally referred to as wise men, were mysterious visitors whom we are told came from the east. We're not sure entirely where, but we know that they followed a star from a long, for a long distance to find and worship the newborn king. Some scholars think that they may have been from China. At any rate... Whether they are most likely astrologers or some kind of rulers, the Magi are noble and wealthy men who demonstrate God bridging even more divides. The Magi are esteemed uh, opposite to the lowly shepherds in human social structures, but more importantly, they are Gentiles and not Jews. Their inclusion in Jesus' birth story echoes the radical idea that Christ's love, that, that Christ the Messiah brings salvation and restoration to all people. This, just not the Jews, this is really good news. The Magi are holy men of some sort. They seem to belong to more of a mystical tradition than the Jewish leaders of that day. From that standpoint, they are in, in a stark contrast, you know, and it's important to highlight that they are, there are no Pharisees. It's important to highlight that there's no Pharisees, no Sadducees, no other spiritual VIPs who are invited to Jesus' birth. Instead, there are these travelers of a different race who receive an audience, both with King Herod and Christ, the newborn king, Talk about a contrast, a huge contrast in the two of them, one for evil and one for uh, love and um, ultimate leadership. The Magi were also willing to disrupt their own lives at a great personal cost and sacrifice of both their time and money. You know, they came on this great journey and humbled themselves. They humbled themselves to worship and bring expensive gifts to the baby of a poor, unassuming couple in the Judean countryside. The cast of characters that God assembled for the arrival of his son on earth is far from the expectations any of us would even have imagined. This likely even was more so true of the people of that time who lived with wide divisions. I mean, they had much greater divisions between uh, people and people groups than we have today. To us, you know, this might seem like a ragtag bunch who are gathered there to witness Jesus' birth, 
to the Jewish rel religious leaders, it was downright blasphemous that the Messiah would be so lowly and associated with the full spectrum of what the Pharisees and the religious elite would call unclean people and animals. In Jesus' birth alone, he cut through and united many simply by being born. In doing so, God revealed several things about his love to us that we're going to explore today. The first is, is that Christ is love embodied. The Bible talks about love in many places. You know, God's, God is love. God is love, and the Bible is his love story for all humanity. From creation, God made people and enjoyed spending quality time with them in the Garden of Eden. You know, when sin entered the world, death, brokenness, and separation from God came. In the midst of this separation, God, out of his love, out of his deep love for humanity, continued to call out to, work with, and make covenant promises over the years with the very human beings that he created and loved and desires so much to have a personal relationship with. And if you don't know Jesus, just know that he desires to have the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He desires to have a personal relationship with you. Through the generations, God worked his plan and brought Jesus in the fullness of time to take away the sins of the world and to reconcile humanity back to himself. In the Bible, Jesus is described as a groom and the church as a beautiful bride. Think about that image. You know, this imagery is of an intimate, loving relationship with God and his church, with Jesus and his church. Jesus brings us into relation, a relationship of covenant love, and God will never break his side of the covenant. Never, ever. And even when we break it, you know, we always have the opportunity to come back. Jesus restores our union with God, who is love. God is love. In the scripture we heard earlier from 1 John chapter 4, the apostle John beautifully describes the love of God in the opening verses of this passage, where he writes, Dear friends, let us love one another. For love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. And this is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. That we might live through him. A little side note to point out. The Greek phrase that is translated, we might live, in verse 9, has a deeper meaning to it. You know, the, the we might live has a supernatural meaning behind it. You know, the early disciples that would have, that would have read um, or heard the speaking of, of John or, or read this letter that John wrote to the church, they would have heard it differently than we hear it today. They would have heard that we might live supernaturally through him. You know, if we look into the book of Acts, this is exactly, this is something that's important to note. This is exactly how the original disciples lived. You know, at Pentecost, they were baptized with the Holy Spirit. They were empowered to live supernaturally through him. Jesus wants us to live supernaturally. Jesus wants to live supernaturally through us as well. He died for us and gave us the Holy Spirit so that we could. The Holy Spirit is a gift so that Jesus can live supernaturally through us. There is so much more. I want us all to hear this wherever you are in your Christian walk. There is so much more to the Christian life than we are currently living. And for those of you who don't know Christ, there is so much more beyond what you ever thought you could imagine a person, than a, that a personal relationship with Jesus can offer. Do you know that there is more? Do you know that? That there is more? Are you hungry for more? 
I see some heads going back and forth. Yes, I'm hungry for more. I know I'm hungry for more. I was uh, in a meeting a couple weeks ago and uh, with a network that I'm connected with and they were speaking some prophetic words. Anyway, the, the point is, is that during that meeting, uh, it was a group of women. One of the things I noticed is they have more. They have more. <laughs> And, and, I, and I saw the lack that I had. Like, they have more, and I want the more. I'm hungry for it. So are you hungry for more? And if we're not hungry for more, why not? Why are we satisfied? Why are we, why are we satisfied or complacent or whatever it might be? Why? If the answer is yes, that you are hungry for more, I highly recommend that you get the book, just write it down right now, make a note of it. Actually, it's easy to remember. There is more by Randy Clark. I highly recommend that book if you are hungry for more. If you read that and you're not like hungry for more, you come talk to me. So in the passage we heard, John also writes, this is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God is, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. This is another area where we have to do better at. We have to do better at loving one another. John tells us that God is love. Love is is God's nature, and he has shown it to us by sending Jesus. When we come to Jesus and we give him our lives, we are restored to love. We are restored. We start to restore the connection to love, and um, we get that peace that passes all understanding, and hold, our whole world starts to get turned upside down in a really good way. You know, we are fulfilled in love. Like we, our true fulfillment is only going to be in love. We are fulfilled in love, in God's love. We live in him and he lives in us. We can count on God's love. God's love will not let us down. It fills us and fuels us. You know, it calls us and enables us to love each other. And that brings us to our second point. Love defines and propels us. Love defines and propels us. So near the end of Jesus' earthly ministry, when he's gathered with his 12 disciples for their Passover meal, this is kind of Jesus' last supper with his disciples, he tells them in John 13, 34 and 35, he says, a new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, by your love, everyone will know that you are my disciples. If you love one another. I'm going to say that again. By this, referring to by your love, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Jesus is saying that the divining characteristic of a disciple is love. How will people know they are followers of Jesus? By the love we show to other people. You've heard this before. How will people know we are Christians? By our love, by our love. I know there's a hymn that sings that. They will know we are Christians by our love. One of the ways Jesus loved his disciples was by teaching them to do what he did. His disciples watched him love the people he encountered. They watched him cross racial, racial, religious, status, gender, and other barriers that divide people. They watched him out of love do that. They watched the compassion that he extended They watched him release healing and deliverance and forgiveness and kindness and love. Love to other people, love to his disciples. 
Jesus showed them what to do. And then Jesus sent them out to practice what he taught them. You know, we first read in, in uh, forget which one of the Gospels, but he sent, first he sent out the 12, you know, ahead of him. And then later he sends out 72, you know, and he continues to send out his church to do what he did. That's real love when we, when we allow ourselves to be taught by Jesus and then go out and do what he taught us to do. He showed them what was possible and called them to follow in his footsteps. And Jesus is calling his church to spiritually, in a sense, man up and follow in his steps. He's asking the church to rise, to rise up and learn how to put their love on. And we don't do it through our own power. We do it through his power, not our power. How is Jesus leading you to love others this Christmas season by following his teaching and and example. How is he doing that? Will we let Jesus' love in? Will we let Jesus' love in us help a stranger in need? Will we do that? Will we let Jesus' love in us lead us to those who look and talk and think and live differently than we do? Will we allow his love to cross those barriers? Will we let love be the defining characteristic of who we are? You know, the church hasn't always done a good job at this, and it's easy for us to point fingers, you know, at some pretty big wrongs throughout the church's history, and we can all probably think even of public Christians and churches in our times that just make us cringe with, you know, anger or even embarrassment, embarrassment at their rigid, un- unloving speech and actions. But we must also look at ourselves, too. I mean, of course, none of us is perfect, and I'm not saying we are. None of us is perfect as individuals or as a collective church, but each of us, every single person at the sound of my voice, each of us can certainly find opportunities this Christmas season to allow God's love to flow through us to others of various backgrounds, people who don't look like us, talk like us, the people that God puts in front of us, You know, hopefully this is already happening through the blessed to be a blessing challenge from last week. I know Dave and I had an opportunity to bless uh, someone uh, last night, and it was just a good opportunity to step out and do that. And I hope that the blessed to be a blessing challenge will go beyond the $100, that it'll go beyond you know, and that we will live that and be generous in blessing others in the new year as well. So this brings us to our last point for today. Love empowers us to cross man-made divides. Wow, we know that (laughs) these are divided times right now. All you have to do is turn on the news and sometimes I'm like, I don't even know if I recommend that because of all the stuff that's being Uh, spewed out there, which we know a lot of it isn't even true, but it seems our culture, nation, and world tends to find many ways to divide people into us and them groups. You know, this is nothing new. There's nothing new under the sun. This It's why Jesus' teaching was so radical. It's why God's love is so radical. You know, Jesus said in Matthew 5, verses 44 43 and 44, for example, you have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies, love your enemies, love your enemies, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Do you have any enemies? Do you have any people that you don't like? Find a way to love them this Christmas season. Find a way to do it. And I already know the one that is going to challenge me to love, and I'm going to find a way. Jesus didn't only tear down walls of division at his birth. He can 
tenuously reached across them. Jesus befriended tax collectors who in his day were hated by many because of their shrewd tactics and by collecting more than was due. I mean, just think if we reached out and crossed some lines of some people who have shrewd tactics and love them. Jesus even invited a tax collector named Matthew to follow as one of his 12 disciples. Jesus spoke with a Samaritan woman at a well, which broke several social taboos all at once. You know, first is Jews didn't associate with Samaritans. And Jewish men especially did not talk with women like this in public. He told his listeners, Jesus told his listeners, that if a Roman soldier forced them to carry his pack for a mile, which the soldiers could and did do, that they should carry it two miles. One of Jesus' most powerful stories about this kind of unexpected love in action is the story of the Good Samaritan found in Luke chapter 10, verses 30 through 35. Many of us know how it goes. A traveler was robbed and beaten and left for dead on the side of the road. A priest came along and crossed the road to avoid the bloody scene. A Levite did the same. This, the, this would be like the, the church. That, that's what the church did at that time. But finally, a Samaritan came along and saw the man and stopped to help him. The Samaritan bandaged, bandaged his, the man's wounds, put him on his donkey, and delivered him to an inn where he paid the innkeeper out of his own money to take care of the man. The application of this is if we see someone in need, if God highlights and we see somebody in need, we should stop and help them. This is challenging for us today. It's challenging for us today, but it was radical. It was radical in Jesus to Jesus' ancient listeners. It was radical to them. The Jews hated the Samaritans. Their racism against the Samaritans went back centuries to when the kingdom of Israel split. The Samaritans intermarried with foreigners and established their own temple to worship in. The Jews considered them an inferior race with a corrupt religion and viewed them with prejudice and disdain. But this is who Jesus, Jesus is holding up the Samaritan as an example of loving our neighbor. Jesus was crossing the divide. He was reaching across the cultural, spiritual, political, relational, and racial divisions. Jesus calls us to do the same. He was illustrating the kind of love that John describes in, in um, 1 John chapter 4, verse 18, where it says, there is no fear in love. But perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. Jesus' love is a fearless love that calls us and enables us to cross the borders, to tear down the barriers, to reach out above the disagreements. The fear that is driven out by love is the fear within ourselves. That's the fear that's driven out. It's the fear within ourselves. Love overcomes the fear of the other. Love overcomes the fear of the other, who may not look like us or sound like us or share the same perspective or experience as us. But love will call, cause us to step over that divide. Maybe reaching across the divide begins in your family for those who have family members that you haven't spoken with for years, and you know exactly who I'm talking about. I'm still surprised how many Christians have not reached out to a family member that there's this huge thing. You know, it's time to cross that divide. Maybe it's in your home. Maybe it's in your neighborhood, your workplace, or community. 
Jesus at Christmas and all the time, all the time, calls us together into his loving presence and invites us to make room for all. How are you making room for all? And it doesn't matter whether we think they deserve it or not. We need to make room and invite. There is a humility in love and a willingness to put someone else first. Sometimes love means taking the simple step of building a bridge, taking that gesture, making an invitation, picking up the phone and making that phone call, reaching out your arm to help someone. Sometimes it's being willing to listen and not defend, to hear someone out, to listen. It is always being willing to choose to see someone else, not as other, but as equal. Equally loved by God, equally welcomed into his presence, equally drawn into and propelled out of his miraculous, divine, all-consuming love. This is God's love. It's God's love. It's the gift of Christ. This is the heart of Christmas. The whole reason Jesus came was because he loved all of us. And we need a savior. So as we rapidly approach Christmas Day, I invite and challenge us all to rediscover Christmas by rediscovering and seeking first a greater baptism of the Holy Spirit, a baptism of love. You know, we are not going to change and transform this region, unless we're hungry for more of Jesus, unless we're willing to let more of his love come into our lives, there is so much work that needs to be done, but it's only going to be done by his transforming presence and his transforming love. So as you go from here today, I encourage us all to look for the places and spaces where You can let love cross a bridge, cross a divide, and bring hope, healing, forgiveness, reconciliation uh, to others, not just to relationally, but, but to God as well. Our world needs this. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for today. We just pray, even with arms out right now, Lord, to receive more of you. Lord, I pray that everyone at the sound of my voice who says, yes, I'm hungry for more, that you would just touch us right now, that you would begin to fill us with more of your love, with more of your Holy Spirit, Forgive us, we pray, Lord, for not desiring more of you, for not walking out in love in the things we say and do, Lord. Forgive us, we pray. Teach us, Lord. Teach us how to walk it out one day at a time, one minute at a time, one hour at a time, whatever it takes. so that they will know that we are Christians by our love, by our love. Not by words, not by other means, but they will know by our love. We give you the praise, honor, and glory for what you're doing in, through, and among us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Joy, sweet joy.
words by thine advent here. Disperse the gloomy clouds of Dark shadows put to flight. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel. Shall come to thee, O Israel. O come, desire of nations, What are you most excited about for Christmas? I'm getting to see all the, my family. What are you most excited about for Christmas? Um, toys and Santa. Toys and Santa. How about you, Brody? Um, when she had to call me and give us toys. Yeah. Whose birthday is it for Christmas? Jesus. Yeah. Do you remember what he got for his first gifts? Mm-hmm. What? Do you remember? A dump gold? truck. A dump truck? Gold? Okay, what else? Do you remember anything else? Um, a paper. Paper? Yeah. What are you most excited about this year for Christmas? Giving gifts to my family. <gasps> what about you, Harrison? And making Christmas lights. M making Christmas lights? Yeah. How about you, Holly? Mm, Christmas cookies. Christmas cookies? Yeah. Merry Christmas and stay safe when during the holiday season. Merry Christmas to all out there. Merry Christmas and a happy new year.
So come on, let's give it up for those kids. Oh my gosh. So precious. Thank you, kids. Um, wow. I'm like totally distracted now because that was amazing and beautiful and wonderful. So as we go from here today, I pray that you all, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Amen. Amen. So as you go out, go out with your loved one and make a difference. Extend that transforming love of God of Christ into every conversation and person you interact with. Amen. Some points to remember. Jesus Christ is love embodied. Love defines and propels us. Love empowers us to cross man-made divides. Are we hungry for more of the love of Jesus in our lives? Will we let Jesus' love in us lead us to help those who are different than us? How is Jesus leading you to love others this Christmas season by following his teaching and example? We're glad you stopped by today. Have you made a commitment to Jesus today? Or would you like to? Do you want someone to talk to or pray with you today? Contact us at prayer at morsechapel.org. Let us help you with your next steps with Jesus. Contact us at info at morsechapel.org. Thanks for listening to the message. Click the subscribe button to get notified of our latest updates. We are located at 392 Blake Road, off Blue Ball Road in Elkton, Maryland. Service times are 8.30 a.m. online and 10 a.m. live with masks. For more information, please visit www.morsechapel.org.